Welcome back to talk number four here at our four quarters for clinic, or I'm sorry, four quarters for kids clinic here. This is day three. We've had lots of great talks. Uh, super excited to continue this here with Coach Harvey. We're talking tight four fits. Coach, I'll let you take it from here, but thanks again for jumping out with us. Absolutely. Appreciate the opportunity. Uh, Coach Leno and all you guys just, um, you know, it's an honor to be a part you know, just getting on here with Vinny and uh, watching that guy go to work and the things I've learned from him and so many coaches, I'm just grateful to be a part of this. So, um, you know, you guys see the uh, the screen here. I'm an open book, fellas. You know, Twitter is a great way to get a hold of me. There's my Twitter handle there at the bottom left-hand corner. Um, I, that is my cell phone. It'll come right right, right to, to me. Um, not that I am uh, have all the answers or, or am the, the king of tight fits. Uh, but this is what we do, and hopefully you guys will learn something uh, from this and gather, you know, is there something that maybe you can use for your program? And I would be offended if you didn't reach out to me in one of those two ways there. So um, that's why I want to make sure, and I'll, I'll end this thing with, with the same slide. So we'll make sure that uh, you guys have the opportunity. Um, I'm a big culture guy. So if you see the bottom right-hand corner here, the hashtag mode, um, that's where we're going to start with this thing. And so... Um, <clears throat> One of the things that we want to really want to teach kids, you know, is, is the way we play the game is the way we should live life, right? Um, and so this can all uh, be affected on the game, or excuse me, on the field, in the game, um, but then also in life. So our, our acronym for MODE is making our discipline elite. Um, if you break each one of those words down, um, I am a big acronym guy, and I think it's something that kids can remember, and, and it's easy um, to kind of to preach every day, uh, whether we're in the classroom, whether we're in, um, in meetings or, or what have you. And, uh, and then again, make sure it transfers into life, right? So we want to be in the process of getting there, right? That, that suffix of, of making ING uh, to me is, is here and now, right? What's happening in the now? Um, it's not a past thing. It's not a future thing. It's really easy to talk about, you know, both your successes, which most people want to go to, and then maybe even some struggles that you had in the past. It's also easy, easy to talk about what you're going to do in the future. Um, but the here and now is what matters most, right? And so we want to make sure our kids are understanding that. Um, the next one is just being together, right? Our. It's not a me thing. Uh, it's a we thing, to use the cliche. But we want to get there together. No one gets there alone. And so if we can establish that and instill that in our kids and our mindset, uh, we feel like we're going to be a really good defense. And, um, and then also just outside of life, that's, the, that's what we want to make sure um, that we're preaching, right? Discipline is, is a simple one. Um, I love the Brian Kite quote, is, you know, the shortcut to the elite is having discipline. Discipline is that shortcut. And we want to make sure that our kids understand it's not going to be easy. We're going to be demanding. Um, we're not going to be degrading, but we're going to get after you. And we're going to expect you to do things uh, our way, um, but the, that, that's the way is the discipline way, right? You're, you're who you are, you're your own individual, um, but our way is the discipline way. So uh, finally, we wanna be elite, right? Um, we wanna make it all the way to the top. That's the ultimate goal. And uh, we wanna be elite in all things. And so again, what we preach to them as far as off the field goes is, you know, when you wake up in the morning, be elite in making your bed for your parents. When you um, are in the line at a fast food restaurant in town, you wanna be elite. You wanna make sure that your attitude reflects uh, what we're embodying as a football team and specifically as a defense, right? When you're in the classroom, you're elite. When you're in the hallways, you're elite. When you're running after the ball carrier or you're going to get that ball up in the air, uh, you're being elite. So again, I'm a big culture guy. Um, just one of the things that I want to make sure that we're, we're preaching all the time to our kiddos. Um, <clears throat> defensive philosophy, getting to on the field stuff, uh, fast, physical, and fun is what we preach. Um, you know, Playing fast and physical, I think, is something that every defensive coordinator in the country is probably preaching at every level, right? Um, if we're playing fast, then we're doing things the right way. Um, you know, my thing that I tell kids all the time is if you're expecting and accepting someone else to do your job, you're probably playing slow. So never expect or accept anyone else to make the play that you're supposed to make, right? You're one of 11, so don't try to do too much. Um, that is a very small fraction. And then if you break it down to a whole football team, we preach the 188 concept, right? And so there's 88 different positions on the football field. If you're including LL6 special teams, uh, obviously the offense is going to get a lot of love as well, especially in today's game. Um, but at the same time, if you do your part and you never expect or accept anyone else to fall into that, that position, uh, we're going to be a good defense, right? 
physical is, is part of the game that I think will always remain regardless of the, of the time changes, regardless of the rule changes. Obviously, we've seen a rule, a lot of rule changes in the game of football, and, and a lot of guys are hating it. Um, you know, I get that. I also want to be safe. We just got through talking about tackling here this morning. Uh, I think safety is a big deal, but we want to punish our opponents in every play and every way. If we're doing that, we get all 11 hats with the mindset of getting to the ball again within your 111th, right? Do your job first, but you have the mindset of getting to the football. We're going to be a good defense, right? And then finally, being fun, right? We want to make sure that we're playing the game the right way and we're having fun doing it. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I think the way to do that is, is to celebrate the right way, right? We're going to celebrate as a team. We're going to have fun with one another, not necessarily at the expense of our opponents because then that becomes crossing the line, but we want to get to the gist of loving one another. And, and that's the way we play the game and, and have fun doing it. Uh, so just a little bit of a philosophy thing there, right? Defensive goals, everybody has one. Uh, we want to start by winning the ball game. Um, if we win the ball game, it doesn't matter what the score is. You know, statistics are what they are. Um, but through that, and I think in, the, in order to win the ball game, there are certain statistics that you really need to focus on. And that's where we go next to the money downs. If we're at a 30% conversion rate or less for third and fourth down, that's what we call our money downs. Uh, we're going to be successful, right? Um, this next one, it kind of pains me a little bit because 20 points a game seems like a lot. But if we can hold teams in today's age, especially down here in Texas where it's warm and, you know, quarterbacks are slinging it all over the yard, um, I think we've got a good chance to win. You know, I think we can we can put up three or more touchdowns with our offense. Um, and if we can hold those guys into the teens or lower, uh, we're in a good spot um, to get the victory. We also want to hold our opponents less than 100 yards rushing per game. Um, even in the day and age where spread has kind of taken over, um, I think you win the ball game in the trenches, right? Both sides of the ball. If you can run the ball and stop the run, I think that's the old adage uh, that has been around football for decades, uh, but I still believe that that's true today. Um, if you can make a team one-dimensional, you're going to be okay, right? We want to hold opponents less than 150 yards passing. Now, that might be a little bit more on certain weeks, um, but at the end of the day, if we can keep that 250 mark with total offense and, uh, yes, excuse me, uh, total yardage and offense, um, we, we feel pretty good about what we're doing, right? I think three or more, or, or excuse me, three and outs, if we can go five or more of those a game, that's a huge momentum shift. I think that's a, a lost start in statistics is the three and outs. Um, so we actually keep up with that. And, um, and that's something that I'm charting up in the box during the game. And I want to know, you know, how many of those three and outs, because those eventually build up and it kind of is a spirit breaker, right? We can break the spirit of our opponent if we're doing that. Um, and then the old adage of everybody that uses with turnovers, we want to, you know, uh, provide our offense opportunities and by getting two or more turnovers a game, we do that. And then finally, if we can either score or set up our offense to score twice a game, uh, we, we probably have a pretty good chance to win. So there's some, some goals that we use there. Um, not getting into uh, to what we do, you know, out of the tight front. It's, you know, it's the old school three, four. What makes us a tight front is we can configure into three, three man surfaces where we're going to walk the overhang down. Um, but we are aligned in a four, zero, four front, um, which I'll get into a little bit uh, more later on is why we got away from more four eyes and, and we're going head up alignment. Um, but these are the things that I think about when I'm configuring these fits. Um, number one is gap size, right? So it doesn't matter what, um, what core you have, you're always going to have your five man core. Um, you're going to have a guard, you know, on each side of the center, you're going to have a tackle on each side of each guard and inside of those A's and B's, you know, being the condensed gaps. If those gap sizes are condensed, then to me, it makes the most sense that I have my condensed players, my bigger players in those gaps. Right. That leads to job descriptions. What am I asking my players to do? And can they fit that job description? Do they understand, you know, what they're doing? And then are they allowed to do it, or, you know, by um, stature or by their abilities, which is number three here? Can they can they uphold their end of the deal um, based on what we want to accomplish? Right. Um, so those three things are something that it's every week that we think about. Can we do these things? And if we can. Like, how can we get guys in the right position in our fits, right? We're going to be a single gap fit exclusively. Um, and then through that, those bottom three, we want to try to get three meter, three fitters outside of the line of scrimmage on every fit. If we can do that, again, with the, the, the spread game, the quick game, um, you know, even though we're talking about fits, we'll see some quick game in here uh, when we get to the highlights here in a little bit and the, and the cut-ups. 
Um, and, and if we can stop those things, you know, treat that stuff like a run, Oklahoma perimeter drill that comes into play, that kind of thing, I think we're doing a pretty good job. Um, we are an actually a spill the box team. Uh, we're not going to be exclusively box. And then, of course, being in a 3-4, um, rarely will you see a whole lot of spill. Uh, but we're, you know, we're going to be in a four down on, a, on occasion. It's going to look like a four down on occasion. Um, and so we want to be able to do both, right? Again, going back to that gap, you know, gap size and job descriptions, if, if we can condense those gaps, create piles inside, and we spill something, we're always going to have some overhangs that are boxing it back in or potentially a secondary player uh, that's coming down to play force to maybe help box it in as well. Um, and then finally, just like anybody else, we want to win our one-on-one -on -one matchups, right? That's a big deal with our our weekend planning, if we can find one-on-one -on -one matchups that we feel good about, whether it's through our pressures, whether it's through just our normal base fits, um, then we feel pretty good about our, our chances. Um, <clears throat> we're a big pinch team, right? So getting into um, the schematics of it, again, as I said earlier, we're going to be lined in a 4-0-4 front. Rush, Nose, and Anchor um, are going to be down linemen, and then our Mike and Will are going to be in a 30 technique. Um, we can squeeze them to a 20, we can widen them to a 40, just depending on really, you know, where ball placement is, if it's field boundary, um, what they're trying to do, what the offensive formation is, but, but day one install, we're going to line them up at, at a 30 backer, um, splitting the difference between our four technique and our nose. And then our overhangs are going to be apexed. Um, we're going to use those guys both as nickels. Uh, outside backers that, you know, might be able to fit the box if we go to a four, two, five. Um, but, you know, in, in our current squad, they're converted DBs is what they are. One is a converted corner who is a little bit oversized. Um, and then the one is a converted safety who can play really in the box and on the roof. He's a pretty good ball player. So um, that's kind of what we do here at Hutto. Um, but those guys are going to apex that fit in between the slot and emo. Um, and then uh, fit wise, right? So day one, we're actually not a lag team. I know a lot of type four guys lag on the backside. I want my nose to really be aggressive. And so if you get a left call, um, we may go right, we may go left. It just depends on how we're feeling on that particular uh, week and, and call for that matter. Um, but we're going to attack the hips of the guards, no matter what here, everything is equal. So it doesn't really matter what the strength call is here. We're gonna attack the hip of the guard. So you can see here in the picture, the guard on, on the defense's right side or the left guard from the offensive perspective, he's going to have a lot of pressure between the anchor and that nose attacking the near hip. Uh, we're going to put a lot of pressure on him. So we feel like that can help with both, you know, gap schemes as well as zone schemes. Um, the duo type stuff, you know, that, that nose is, is going to make somebody really work from the center position. Um, if they're trying to block down from the backside, now it looks like it's an automatic climb, but now I feel really good about that guard climbing up on my willy and Will should be able to read what's happening quick enough to make sure that he is able to get away from that block and, and not get climbed on so fast. So um, my process is to think like an offense a little bit. We want to call defense like an offense. And so we have an exact term to get when we want to play brick right now, right? With our Russian anchor, we want to have brick players both in the B gaps pinching. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. You're going to see a lot of clips here um, because we do, quite a bit of it. This is more of a bare front just because of the condensed set, right? They were in a, a bunch set up top here to the field. Um, but if you watch the, the field three or four technique, it really gets a great reset here. That's what we want. We want to reset that line of scrimmage and get penetration both from the nose and that four technique. As he does that, he's able to fall off and make a play. And we're setting the edge, as you can see, with our overhang. So our overhang is sitting right on top of the point man of that bunch. Right. Our interior backer, we've got the other interior backer down here. Um, this is actually just a two down look. We're playing, but that we're still playing that, that four zero four front here. Right. So we're playing with one backer and a three high set. And we're going to try to fit with, you know, this guy setting the edge. You still got a force player here. You got an alley fitter from the roof. And then we're going to fit inside of that edge setter and our four technique with our interior backer. It's a really good job there. See it from the tight. Right, so good job from the backside as well with the four techniques standing up here in a two-point stance. Um, this tackle here to the boundary is a really good ball player. He's got several power five offers, so we wanted to make sure that we were just making him move as much as possible, try to cross his face, and number 10 there does a good job of doing that. 
But that all begins with 11 and 33 and how they get a reset here. Good job setting the edge also by number nine up top. Uh, he's getting double teamed a little bit. He's able to, to shock and shed, and, and we're able to make a play down the line of scrimmage. Right, good fits. Here it is from the end zone. And you can see that four eye, almost a three technique there to the field. 33 is just aggressive and it allows us to fit accordingly. All right, so here's a little bit more of a spread look. Okay, they're at, they're at you know, uh, a trips to the field here. Really good job by the nested backer. But again, with the pinch fit, and, and I'd rather him go a little bit harder here from the boundary, but I love what my nose does. So the nose here is just cutting the field. That's what we call it is cut the field. So don't allow the path of the running back. And again, we've called this pre-snap, right? But we do not want to allow the fit of, or excuse me, the, um, the run of the running back, the path to cross our face. And that's why we can penetrate a little bit more. I don't want to lag. I don't want him thinking two gap. I want him to get upfield. And now from the backside, we're going to fit it accordingly, which we do here. Good job by this backside backer. He just falls back inside of the pinch fit from 55 and great job by the nose. You can see here from the end zone, nose requires, it requires 76 to really move quickly, right? That guard here to our left and that allows the nested backer to get in there and fit that A gap. So as I freeze it here, so we've got an A gap fit from the nose. That's the four technique from the right. Here is a blitzing interior backer. He's playing what we call the low C fit and I'll get involved in that here in a second. Right, this will be the olive C fit. This is the backside C, and there's our A fit. We are single gap across the line of scrimmage. <clears throat> All right, so low C and high C, just for a second. Um, here's a two back set, and sometimes we can fluctuate with our tight four fits. We're going to be in a four zero four with our down lineman. As I said earlier, our overhangs are usually apexed to the solo side, especially when the solo is to the boundary. We can fluctuate fits with the two back set, right? So we notice here, one is in front, one is behind the quarterback. And so we're gonna walk this guy down into what we call a ghost six, right? Our ghost six can be played to a, an attached Y, unattached Y, or the 20 personnel look as we see here in this picture. Our high C and low C fit. So our, our overhangs are going to play outside shoulder of the deepest, no matter what. Just to make their fit really simple, we're, that's our job, right? And that's our box players uh, through and through exclusively. Our interior backers are fitting A to C rock and roll in the guard fit, or our, excuse me, the guard scheme. So we're reading guards just like you would in 046, 050 front. If this guy is playing that high C fit and the play goes to the field here, now I've got a backer fitting the inside. If I call a blitz, I can also fit that backer or blitz that backer, excuse me, um, based on his fit on flow. If it's a pre-snap blitz call, which we have tags with, we can blitz that low C. Now he knows he has help in the low C and he can either fold up underneath or stay to the wide, wide zone look or the perimeter game, right? So here in this picture, all right, it's gonna come back to the boundary after the um, after the split say, or split, uh, split flow, excuse me, split flow look, coming back to the boundary, we're gonna splatter this with our fitter from the overhang. So what we do here, is we splatter it with the inside shoulder to keep the outside free, right? Now the ball goes back that direction towards the field. And so what we're looking for is it bends back here. I want to splatter the split flow look back into that gap. And now that allows me to play fast. Okay, we got a blitz coming from up top. If we had a blitz from coming up top, we would be fine. But here, our interior backer is fitting with that high C fit. He's in the low C because of the pinch fit from the four technique. Right, four technique goes inside. He almost gets too too much. He crosses two faces, ends up in the A gap. But then the you can see here from the end zone, interior backer makes it right. Right. So again, we're just single gap fit out right here. I would rather him hold true to this gap, and now my interior backer fit here. But because he crosses two faces, now we're redirect, and we're there on the fit. Good job right there by the interior backer, seeing what he needs to do to get it right. There's a splatter fit again from the boundary. You can see we're gapped out. Good job there. All right, so against the three-man surface, we're just going to walk down and play, again, that six technique. This is a three-man surface here. What we're going to do is split the crotch with the interior foot. The inside foot is going to just basically split the crotch of that three-man surface. Whether it's tackle over, we'll do the same thing there. 
um, or a true tight end, as you see here in this picture with 21 personnel. And we're rock and rolling the fit with the interior backers. It's a good job again by the front side. Uh, he would have that C gap. Typically, we're pinching. But remember what I said earlier, we're not lagging. I don't really like what the nose does here. He's too slow for my liking. All right, but a good job from the four technique from the boundary, and he ends up taking that A gap. But his aiming point is, again, the near hip of this guard. So as he squeezes inside this, what we tell those guys, if you lose him, if he is not resisting you whatsoever, now you can cut the field just as we would cut it, as we said earlier, with the um, – with the nose, right? We can cut, a, cut the field with our four techniques as well and then fit with our backers. If we're playing with clean backers, then our pinch fits have worked. That's what we want. Again, from the tight, you see the 404 look here. He's going C gap and then it just falls back inside after he finds the football and finds the path of the run. You can see here from, from the end zone, number 11, going for that near hip. He loses him. Now he's going to be the one to cut the field and not allow a cut back there, as well as uh, that split flow look from the backs. Clean backers always should be able to make a play. So again, 11 personnel here. You can see the same, same look. And there's your box player right there. So here's our spill, spill to box concept. So right now, our three down linemen are all spill players, all right? We're going to have our interior backers as our in-between players. We call them the ricochets, and this could be our box player. So our ricochet player could be the splatter guy if we're getting any type of zone look or any climb. You can see 77 tries to climb here, but we know exactly what gap we are supposed to fit. So it works out in our favor. And now 77 can't climb. He's got to climb to the backside, but it's too late because we've already got a fitter there on the ball. Uh, great job by 33 there setting the edge. We set the edge that way, and our pinch is working, which 11 does a good job holding his pinch. Now 77 is caught in no man's land. Down block from the, from the tackle. He's caught in no man's land. That allows our backers to get there and play, play free. Here's this look from the end zone once again. Scraping over the top. Good tackle right there. Good shoulder leverage. I'd like for his head to be up and run his feet a little bit more, but it works out. All right, so here we're actually sending a pressure. So our interior backer is going to blitz the A gap. But again, they know where they're supposed to be and we create a pile. Now what I want you to watch here again, I don't like his footwork, but it's a good job by this overhang here to the field. He knows that he is playing that high C fit, right? We're losing one interior backer. So now this backer is playing low hole both sides in the coverage game, but he is going to play the low C fit in the run game. This guy is what we call a high C fit down here from the overhang in the field. He keeps that high C fit, and this is where the fit comes into play because it's a scramble, turns into running play. We want to be outside shoulder of the deepest, as I said earlier. If he remains there, we push him back inside, and here he makes make sure he makes the point. All right, a lot of kids, what they'll do is they'll get too anxious here and try to run inside, lose leverage by shooting the crease, and now they allow a mobile quarterback to get outside of them. We're going to keep our fit the entire time. We're going to remain on the outside shoulder of that defense. All right, again, here, a 10 personnel look. Good job pinching the fits here. Again, this is where um, the Oklahoma perimeter drill comes into play for us. We'll drill this quite a bit. And so now my fits on the outside go like this. We got force player here on this particular defensive call on our scheme. Um, we play a lot of cloud. We'll play some sky where the safety will come down and play force. And then we'll also switch opportunities and play some buzz here where now the overhang is actually more of a nickel. He's going to be secondary force. And I'm going to buzz with him out here in the flat. And now my safety is going to replace. So these guys would be replaced on that. But the fit would just simply go the corners coming outside in. Overhangs going inside out and safety should be head up. Okay. So we are always talking our fits with our secondary guys, just as we are our box players. Good job right there with the inside out from the overhang. Keeps keeps track on the near hip, makes a nice tackle. Good job by the safety eluding the block as well. There's another one. We're actually trapping this one down here to the field. So you can see four call it late. We do a lot of press, so he's going to press. 
and then look for the bell and then shoot back in, into the inside. I would rather see a little bit more shock and shed. So right here, because of the trap, our safety now should replace here. We should still be coming inside out there and now he is the one that's head on. Did a good job of timing this. This works out in our fits just like it would in anything else. All right, going back to culture, as I mentioned in the beginning of my talk, one of the things we preach is everything on the ground should be treated like a fumble, all right? I'm not really real excited about how some of these guys are treating this one. That is a near ball, and that could be, you know, that could be called a, a, a bad call in high school ball. We do not have instant replay as of yet. So that could be one of those, you know, bang, bang plays, and, and somebody might miss that call or like us better than the other team on that particular case. We should be there to scoop that thing up, treat everything like a fumble. We just say treat it, right? That's our buzz phrase, treat it, treat it, treat it. We're going to get that football. You can see here from the pinch fits on the end, uh, from the end zone, number eight, I would rather have a little bit hot, hotter feet, kind of kills that outside foot, but he is attacking his inside zone just as 55 is, right? Our fits are good on the interior as well, even though this is an exterior play. All right, so our slant fits, so we also have, to have a call for this. Um, as we want just a one gap slant, we'll just tell our kids, you know, to call whatever it is, we'll give them a stronger a week, and now it allows our backers to play free. So the dotted lines that you see, the only guys that are really reading anything are Mike and Will. The Jack would able, be able to fold back to the inside with anything running away, uh, but he knows that he is typically going to be that high C player because we have our anchor now in the crease, right? So our anchor's playing the low C, our nose is just slanting to that side. Our rush is slanting to that side. We got a one gap slant fit here. Mike and Will are reading the backers and they're still playing either A to B from the Willie side, knowing that the anchor is now playing the crease. And then from the backside, it's still your typical A to B, or excuse me, A to C fit because you have the brick player in the rush. <clears throat> our money is also going to know where our guys are fitting so he can play high C or all of C, depending on the flow of the play. So here we're just pinching inside, right? We got that one gap slant. So now knowing that the guy in the orange shoes here to the field is playing the C gap, that allows the mic to run through the B easily. And again, we're calling this from the box, right? So as a defense coordinator, I'm giving them the call of which gap they have. We are not reading blocks at all. So our, our concept and our process and thought is we're going to be an attack and react rather than a react and attack going to get after people five yard loss there good job good run through it all begins with the one one gap slant up front there it is you can see it 55 gets reached on the back side i don't like it but luckily the play's going to the front side and now that gives a free run through from number 10 because they're running that wide zone look that helps him run through and he knows his path right before the ball is snapped so it allows him to play fast without having to read too much Again, we're showing pressure here. We send the we send the uh, the slant to the boundary. You can see it just allows us to play faster. It's a pretty good job using his hands there by the nose, and then the overhang comes in late. <clears throat> so this one from the from the boundary, what we're trying to do here is we want to stack, and you can see it from the end zone. Once we show the blitz right here, we want to stack these three gentlemen here. So the play should go as he's going to slant to the crease of the boundary. He's going to fold back all the way to the A gap based on our call. Now we've got a free player here who's going to fly and find flow either way. And now he's going to fold into B. Okay. And it actually works out in our favor. This is all based on, again, my call. I can share some of this stuff with you guys if you want to reach out to me. All right. Overhang almost gets caught up too far inside, but then he comes back off and nests himself quite well to get involved in the play. A lot of this happens because of the good penetration here from our C gap, from our four technique. He's actually playing more of a five. All right, that's another thing, guys, that I, I just allow my guys to be players. I'm not going to have them be robots in the line exactly like I want them to. They know the gap they're supposed to fit based on my call. I give them a little bit of freedom to line up however they see fit to get to that gap and to create problems for the guy that's trying to block them, right? Um, here's our type four attached. Oops, I'm sorry. We go type four attached here with the jump of the tight end. Okay, now we're going to more of a bear look. You can see we stay up top from the boundary and then we get an option play. So again, you can see our fits working out quite well here, right? We've got secondary force here. 
This should be our alley fitter. That is our crease fitter coming inside out. And then we're just chasing from the backside with everybody else. Good strike there. <clears throat> Great quick twitch. So that's exactly what we want it to look like with anything on the perimeter, whether it's option, wide zone, uh, true toss, which we don't see a whole lot of anymore. We want our corners involved. We want our safeties involved, right? And then everybody else is pursuing the ball and we get get the uh, nice hit, fumble up in the air, comes ours. See it from the end zone. So again, we're just pinching right here, taking on that, or excuse me, slanting right here and taking on that double. And now our backers are all running clean and free. Good job by the corner making the play. So those of you that are wondering what options or uh, what the option jobs are, Job requirements in the option right now. My primary force, which is going to be my overhang, as I said earlier, the wide jump is going to get him in that tight six. He's got pit, or excuse me, he's got quarterback. And now my secondary guy, which is going to be the corner here, is going to take pitch. He's the one that causes the fumble. Safety needs to be a little bit more aggressive. <clears throat> Bunch to the top. Again, we got a five man pressure here. So this again, Makes it simple when we have our, our slant call, and it's not a really good slant. We should be slanting to the left here, but he knows that he can blitz that A gap right now. It just makes him play a lot faster. He doesn't have to wait and see what his daylight is. We're blitzing the A gap and complementing our slant with the blitz. Okay, so again, this is a five man look here. We're blitzing all of C from the boundary. We're blitzing B from there, and then we still have that, that guy that's getting cracked up top. He should see that, and we should crack replace two on the back end. Safety should be able to, to call crack replace here as soon as 33 gets cracked. Bad read there, but he should be going and, and replacing there on the crack replace. So here we're trying to, to show a blitz coming off of the field. Uh, they audible. We come anyway, right? So here's a good job by the, the alley fit. We should be inside out again with the, with the backer. We're the gap exchanging here, right? So it's going to be the interior backer gap exchanging with the overhang he should be inside out safety who makes the play is right side up okay and then the corner needs to come off and be outside in again that's just us working our fits from all angles right both interiorly and exteriorly <clears throat> so here we're in a three three stack still works exactly the same okay we've got a slant called so now this backer here on our stack look, he's got a two-way go, but if he knows that we're slanting to the field, he's going to fold inside. If we should be slanting to the boundary, now he's going to come outside. He does a good job of redirecting here and being able to force it back to the inside. We've got good pursuit from the backside, and then we make the play in the backfield. Again, just avoid that crack. Right, Everybody should know where they're going based on the call from the box. So our 3-3 stack fits up exactly like our type four, just exactly like our 3-4 our country coverage stuff. We're gonna fit our 3-3 stack with a three high safety look exactly the same. We may lose one in the box, he's now on the, in, on the roof, but he's now gonna fit the crease from side to side from that middle position um, on the roof. Just like oh, you know, Iowa State has done a great job with uh, in, in recent years. Good job here on the slant. Good job fighting through with the nose. Now we're slowing down. We're slowing guys down. We put 76 at a disadvantage who's trying to reach us on the wide zone look. Just run that wide zone and now we're able to play fast and get across face. Good job with the slant and owning gaps there. And then you can see from the backside here, we're just gonna complement that with what we're doing with our backers, right? So backers now, he knows that he's front side this backer would play that gap. This backer is now playing backside gap. He does a good job pushing the issue and then making the play here. So then finally, our stunt fits. This is where, again, I give freedom. So you can see a four eye here from the anchor. And if we're getting all the way into the A gap, again, we've got a call for this. We'll get all the way to the A gap. I can allow him to, to tighten his fit up a little bit, especially with the three-man surface. Um, we will even go into a bear look here on occasion. If he can get into a three and cross face, but if I, if I can play it from a four or a four eye, 
cross two faces, then I like what I see, right? I tell them cross three eyes and we're good, right? The three eyes would be both, you know, get completely across the guard and then cross the interior eye of that tackle. We're in good shape. So we'll do this as well. You notice the wheel knows he's got a gap fit, right? If we've got a slant here to the strong side, we're fitting, excuse me, B gap and B gap from Mike and Willie both. Now that takes away their reach from the guards based on our fits up front with our three down linemen and then our walk down six from the jack position. So 51 here from the boundary, you can see he crosses those two faces. He gets a down block right there, but he is able to accomplish what he wants and getting to the A gap. And now our backers are playing free and clean. So now we, we require that dart from the, from the tackle from the boundary or field, excuse me, to block one of two linebackers. He's got to make a choice. He gets caught in no man's land because we're putting pressure on him. Doesn't block anybody in our front side interior backer makes the play. All right, you can also see the fit. I'd rather him be a little bit more aggressive here from the overhang at the boundary position. I want that splatter to happen even with the cut block. We should get low and leverage him and put our shoulder pad right on his chin and be aggressive, right? But it allows our backers to run free from the interior spot. Good job by number nine here seeing this. He gets that down block. He's going to check backside. He sees the puller coming even from the dart look. And now he's able to play fast knowing that what we're doing up front, he's got one or two gaps. All right, here's a two-by-two two look out of 10 personnel. We send a pressure, all right? What, what, you want, or what I want you to show you here is a good job by the field four technique. Again, crossing those three eyes. He gets all the way over there on the back of number 78 because of the slide protection, right? But that allows our, our backer, again, who's blitzing, to get more of a free path. And now he's one-on-one -on -one with the back trying to max protect across on the slide. We force an inerrant throw, and then we get an interception over the top of it. All right, but a good job by that four technique to, from the field to get all the way across. And now 78 is in chase mode, and that requires the back to pick up our backer, and that's, a, that's very difficult to do. A lot of space to pick up a blitzing backer there. See it from the end zone. So what our guys are taught, if you can't cross three eyes, as I said earlier, just get as much as you can and get on that hip of that guard. Because again, their aiming point is the hip of the guard so much that, that just that second nature of them, and then our backer is able to come across and force it in there and throw. We get an interception. Start out in FIB here, so we we got the stunt going to the boundary. All right, you can see again from the field, we're bringing him all the way over into the A gap, trying to cross three eyes. All right, he does that, allows our backers to play fast. Both interior backers are up on the line of scrimmage right now based on our call. So we're playing with that fast flow concept. You can see it here from the end zone. <clears throat> Watch again, this guy here is going all the way into the A gap based on our call. He squeezes it well enough. Now our boundary interior backer is able to play over the top and he's right there into the gap to make the play. Good job. So here, even on the boots, right? So we get all the way into the A gap from the field here, should anyway. Now you get that, that full pull right there. They're trying to get us over there to go with the naked. As they go naked, then we're right there with the overhang coming off the edge. And again, his path is gonna be deeper than the deepest. So he's gotta slow down. He's got a slow pace. We don't wanna chase here. Remember, he's the box player. If we chase here, now they're naked out the back door. But instead, we're gonna aim deeper than the deepest, and then he's allowed to get a sack because of the job by our, uh, our four technique. Again, chasing that, all right, making them chase him inside, and now we're clean off the edge. Get the sack. All right. Uh, I think I got about nine minutes to spare. Kind of went through that a little bit fast, but I wanted to make sure I got through it. Um, guys, there's my contact info. Um, I really appreciate, again, this opportunity. Uh, Pat, thank you. Um, for, for everything that you guys are doing with this, uh, this benefit. You know, I, I'm, I'm just grateful to the game of football for the opportunity um, to coach, uh, to, to love on kids, but then also to give back to the game through, you know, maybe giving a coach a thing or two where I can, um, you know, help somebody out, right? So that's, that's why I'm here. Um, that's why I love this game. And uh, anything I can do for any of you guys, don't hesitate to give me a shout. Again, that's my cell phone number. 
Twitter is a great way uh, as well to get a hold of me. So thanks a lot. Back to you, man. Thank you, coach. Really appreciate it.